hello everyone welcome back to my unreal engine open world tutorial series so today i am going to show you how to make a continuous uh, ridge like this well this uh, this is an automated process so let me show you so these measures i have placed these measures uh, using a spline these are instanced static meshes and as I change this uh, change the spline these meshes are automatically placed along the mesh along the spline like this so I can edit add splines and change the shape of the spline to make uh, any desirable ridge shape like this okay so this is what I'm going to do today and as always this episode is sponsored by these generous patreons thank you very much for the support you guys are giving me okay so yeah I'm sure most of you must have been playing with mega scans these days so I thought of doing something with that so today yeah this is uh, this uh, Icelandic what's the name of this Icelandic lava cliff so yeah and I'm going to yeah let's see how to make a whole ridge of this Icelandic lava cliff using static meshes so placing by hand so I'll place one of them and place it like this and another one place it like this and another like this so yeah now when I place it like that well this looks good but I can't really uh, let's say we are working on a open world type of a game and we have a really huge landscape so doing it by hand like this I don't really think it's very practical unless you have a huge team so let's see a way to do this by without placing by hand at least up to some extent to automate this process okay right so to get started yeah I'll first delete these meshes I just placed and in my blueprints folder yeah I have created another folder named procedural so here I'll create another blueprint let's call it um, procedural reach okay and so I need a way to place those Icelandic lava spires lava cliffs along some path so define a path the easiest way to do is add in a spline like this okay so yeah now let's place the spline now the spline this procedural ridge in the world right it's like this now let me in increase the length of this spline a little bit okay Mm. 
I will place it alongside this cliff in the landscape oh no that's not necessary okay so now I need a way to place those uh, cliffs along this spline so let's uh, go back to the blueprint and here actually there are two ways to do this either I can use uh, place static meshes so I can place uh, instanced static meshes the advantage of using instanced static meshes is that uh, they are good for performance uh, if you need I can do another episode on that but here I will not go into explaining that so yeah let's add let's add this one of this hierarchical instance static mesh component let's just call it HISM I don't need it under spline and for the static mesh I'll add this lava cliff right nothing happens yet okay so now I need a way to place those uh, instances of this static mesh along this spline so let's get this spline and get location do I need that? no let's use get transform at distance along a spline right now using this node we can get the location and rotation of each point along the spline also we can place instances of this uh, instanced static mesh like this add instance world space so here for the world transform I need to give location a rotation and a scale okay so let's do this once I'll split this one as well and see what happens compile now that I have done this in the construction script therefore it should be automatically placed here all right here I need to select world space and once I compile you can see yeah we have one of the one instance of that um, ridge let's rotate it to the other side no, that's not necessary okay see the scale I think the scale is correct right now where's the cursor okay now not just one I need couple more of instances of this mesh placed along this spline so we can do it like this let's promote this to a function let's call it not a function let's say a macro place mesh And let's take distance as an input. 
like this now here we have that input okay then I'll promote this to a variable let's call it place in distance okay so after I place one instance I need an output here then uh, let's set distance let's set this one with an increment like this I will add for the increment let me promote this also to a variable let's call it increment and for the default value I'll give thousand and then again I have to connect this like this but only if this placing distance is still on the supply that means we can get we can do a branch here like this if this one is smaller than length of the spline if this is true connect it back again here now if I compile this you can see there is a line of the same ridge well this is well this this will make things easier for you okay now now you see some kind of uh, like a tiling or a repeating effect here because we are not doing any we are not adding any randomization so let's add some randomization under play smash well what are the things we can randomize I don't think it's a good idea to change the rotation because this does not have a backside as you can see like this so it's not safe to do rotate maybe we can yeah let me lift this a little bit okay we can do some scale change mm. Um, split okay random float in range let's not make it smaller so let's give it like something in between 1 to 1 1.5 scale okay now this looks a little bit better but it's still not that great but uh, from the player's perspective it's good I guess and I have used that uh, terrain blending technique I have done in previous episode okay now what yeah let's try adding some curve and see what happens well this is still looks good let's do a complete 
circle. Okay. All right. So this is the procedural ridge, and yeah, I'll stop this episode at this point, and in the next episode, I'll continue to improve this effect. So because as you can see in the distance, you can see this is pretty uniform. And that's not really good and also you can see some imperfections in places like this and here that is also not good right anyway I'll stop at this point and let's check the frame rate it's at 120 I'm using a GTX 1060 sorry 1080 and uh, 16 GB RAM and i7 but still I get 120 that's good I guess because I have placed a huge number of measures okay if you like to support my work you can get the membership of my patreon club link would be in the description below and thanks for watching see you in the next episode goodbye